just start straight away? Yes, please. Okay, Bismillah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قوة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم my brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope you're well when I say you're well I actually mean more than well in the month of Ramadan especially these days when we have been fasting so much mashallah in such long hours it's not as long as perhaps in the last few years but it nevertheless is pretty long and when you have fasted so long you've been fasting only for Allah remember the hadith of Rasulullah which simply says a servant of Allah can only fast for him there is no other way fasting is only for Allah and Allah is the one who is going to give us the reward that's the simple bottom line to our fasting so I want to ask you all to think about the month of Ramadan and how the month of Ramadan has been for you so far. Let me start by asking a simple question. We're in the lockdown state. We are all in our own houses with our families, our friends. We're spending a lot of time focusing on our immediate issues, of course. Family, our children, our wife. And a lot of us have been very worried about our jobs, income etc but alhamdulillah we're in a better state than many people in many parts of the world especially those places where people are even more worried because they have no income in our country we have income alhamdulillah government is giving us something we'll be getting help and support in every way possible so i would like you to not worry about your income not worry about your family and your friends and your children and your wife or your husband but focus on yourself for the next few days of ramadan but let me ask you a question first. In the month of Ramadan, you fast, right? Over the last 20 years, 30 years, however number of years you've been fasting. If you've been fasting every year for the last 30 years, do the maths. If you've been only fasting for 10 years, 30 times 10, that's 300 days of fasting. If you've been fasting for 20 years, that's 600 days of fasting. And like that, you can see how number of days has accumulated in our life when we've been fasting. If you've been fasting for 30 years, it's 900 days of fasting. How have you spent the last 900 years 900 days of your life that's over two and a half years of fasting life in bettering yourself if you were to repeat the same thing over and over again for 21 days your habit will change habits can be transformed and changed by repeating by altering and doing something new for 21 days it is said that if you really want to change your habit, you do the same thing for 21 days. And yet, many of us have been fasting for 900 days. Many of us have been fasting for 600 days, 300 days, whatever number. It's not been 21. It's 21 times many more. You only need 21 days to change your habit. So if you have a bad habit, and you've not been able to get rid of that bad habit, despite the fact that Allah gave you so many days in your life to transform yourself. He has given you 30 days of life transforming opportunity every year, changing your habit every year. If you were to get rid of one habit each year, by the 10th year, you should have got rid of all 10 bad habits. And most of us shouldn't have 10 bad habits in our lives. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan isn't just about not eating and not drinking and not uh, doing basics, really. It's not about that. In fact, Allah doesn't want the fasting of those people who only focus on these mundane basics. Basics, of course it is. Fine, I understand. You do it. But what about gaining the best of the month of Ramadan? And guess what, brothers and sisters? If you were to focus on one bad habit, one bad habit, let's, for example, say, I have a bad habit of using foul language just imagine 
Alhamdulillah, I don't at my, at my personal level, but if you do, I can't speak without swearing and without being abusive, without being crass and rude and nasty with my words. If that's one bad habit that you suffer from, have you made any efforts in this month of Ramadan that's just gone, 17 days on, our, on its way out? Have you made any effort to make sure that you not only change your way of talking, change your language, but you make a solemn promise that I will never use a foul language ever again in my life? Brothers and sisters, when I was very young, my father took me aside, I remember still, and he said to me, son, make me a promise that you will never swear to anybody. You will never use foul language. And I made a promise to my father that I will never swear and I will never use foul language. And I can tell you with Allah as my witness and my parents who know me very well and my siblings, I never swear and I don't use foul language because I made that concerted effort from that day that I will never do it. Despite the fact that people around me may be doing it. Maybe my friends and others Sometimes do it. People do it when they're in the moments of rage and anger. But that's such a bad habit, such a nasty thing to do. And that is to use Allah-given mouth, the tongue, the language, and abuse it. Allah says in the Quran, He has given you a language. He has given you the ability to speak as a blessing. Ar-Rahman al-Allam al-Quran khalaq al-Insan al-Allamahu al-Bayan. He has taught humanity how to speak. It's a blessing for Allah, out of the kind, kindness and mercy that Allah has for all of us. And if you use your tongue to speak bad, to speak evil, to abuse people, to swear, to speak nasty and foul, then you are abusing what Allah has given you. If that's a habit that you have, and it's become unfortunate, it's become a second nature. There are people who are constantly swearing and saying all sorts of things as part of their daily, daily language. I fear for them because they become so desensitized. They become so accustomed to speaking nonsense and rubbish and filth. They don't even realize it's filth and rubbish coming out of their mouth anymore. If you happen to have developed such a habit, shouldn't you do something about it? Of course you should. The month of Ramadan is the month to cleanse your habits. Not just not eat and drink, of course, that's fantastic and you would do that anyway, but also focus on cleansing your bad habits. So I've given you one example. One example of bad habits, of speaking foul, using bad language, swearing, and being abusive with our tongue. Just focus on one habit that you want to get rid of. If you are habituated in seeing things that are not good with your eyes, Month of Ramadan is the perfect opportunity to develop your eyes to become clean. I remember one person when they came to one great scholar, I think it was Maududi rahmatullahi alayhi in the Middle East and said in, in, in the in the Asian subcontinent and said to him, uh, Sheikh, I have got I have got a problem. I love watching films and going to cinemas. What should I do? Maududi said, No problem, carry on doing what you are doing, but go and make your eyes Muslim. All of your body has become Muslim except your eyes. The man went and thought for many, many days. Six, seven months later, he came back to uh, the sheikh and said, I don't no longer want to need, I don't have a need to watch a film. I don't have an addiction to going to the cinema. I don't have an addiction of the eye anymore. I have made my eyes Muslim. Brothers and sisters, you have to find a way of correcting a bad behavior, a bad habit in the month of Ramadan because it is the perfect opportunity. When you are already not doing lots of things that you perhaps do normally and you are really being strict about it. Another one that comes to my mind, and I always say to people, in the month of Ramadan, I don't understand. How did you do it, my brothers and sisters? You don't smoke. From early morning, from 3.30, you start your fast and you break your fast at about after much after 8, 8.30, 8.45, wherever you are. If it's in the UK, of course. And you don't smoke during those hours. But as soon as you break your fast, some people run outside their houses. I've even seen run outside the mosque to have a buff, have a cigarette. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? First, a cigarette is haram. Secondly, cigarette is such a disgusting habit. It stinks, it destroys your health, 
destroys people around you. Why would you break your fast and run to have a cigarette? Why? Hasn't 20, 30 days of the month of Ramadan been enough for you to give it up? If you can give it up for 21 days, you can give it up for good. So like this, overeating, swearing, bad habits such as wasting time on the internet, playing games, using the games console, consoles that we have in our houses, or smoking, or overindulging in food. If you cannot get rid of those bad habits, you will never be able to do them outside Ramadan. So my brothers and sisters, Ramadan is the month when you should be focusing on developing a personality that is befitting a good Muslim, a devout Muslim. Here is a hadith that I want to focus on today, because I want to talk about Laylatul Qadr, the last 10 days of Ramadan, because it's not very far away from us. Today is the 17th night, which will begin, inshallah. And after that, three straight nights, and then you should be looking for Laylatul Qadr on the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, and 29th of Ramadan. Those are the last or numbered nights. Laylatul Qadr is so significant night. Of course, Muslims all around the world are often very eager to look for it. Why are they looking for it? Because Allah has given them great news of great reward on the Laylatul Qadr night itself. But why is it so important, my brothers and sisters? The answer is simple. It is important because the history of humanity, the destiny of humanity was changed. Allah Azza wa Jal chose to reveal his words, the Quran Al-Kareem, upon the humanity, on our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In, you know, the reason behind that is to change the destiny of humanity. Nobody in any part of the world would have ever come across such a profound and such a groundbreaking, inspiring, guiding, healing criterion for life called Al-Quran. Never. Even the previous books were not as comprehensive as this Quran, the final testament for humanity. Most momentous, momentous occasion in the history of humans. So we should be thankful, grateful, celebratory. We should be doing things to remember the gratitude with, with gratitude to the favor of Allah. Remember what the mountain said? Mountains said when Allah said, Would you take the Quran? And the mount said, Mountain re replied, لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل على جبل إلا رأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله. Had we revealed these mountains, have we revealed this Quran upon a mountain, you would have seen the mountain breaking itself in two small pieces. خشية الله, because of the fear of Allah. My brothers and sisters, even the mountains that are so huge and so big, that balances the earth, cannot cope the weight of the mountain void of the Quran and yet human beings chose to take it because we can Allah has given us a brain Allah has given us intellect Allah has given us emotions Allah has given us the capacity to decide between right and wrong Allah has given us the capacity to read and decipher that which is right and which is wrong to be able to make decisions independently have the free will that's why Quran is befitting for this species called human beings as their guide, as their furqan, the criterion, as their healer called shifa, as their light called nur, as Al-Quran Al-Kareem, the only manifesto left for humanity to save itself. It's what happened on that night when the Quran came down, it began on that night and ended the revelation on the same night, according to the authentic traditions of our beloved Prophet Muhammad So we should all be mindful of it. We should all be looking for the meaning. We should all be looking to understand what it means. And we should all be longing for the blessings of Allah on this night. And that night is not confined to one night, my brothers and sisters. You should be looking for it in the last five nights of Ramadan, in the odd nights of the last five nights of Ramadan. Allah says in the Quran, in Anzalahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Wama adra kama Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayrum min al fishahar. Tanazalu al malaika tu al ruhu fiha bi idn rabbi min kuli amr. Salamun hi hatta matla il fajr. What is Laylatul Qadr? Allah is asking himself or ask, asking us. He answers the question that he has raised. Laylatul Qadr is khayrum min al fishahar, better than thousand months. And thousand months put together, according to some scholars, is more than 85 years of worship. If you are able to catch every year Laylatul Qadr 
85 years worth of worship in one night every year for 30 years. That's 30 years times 85 years of worship. If you have done it for 10 years, that's 10 years of 85 years of worship. 10 years times 85 years of worship per year. My brothers and sisters, we won't even live for 60, 65 years, 70. If we are fortunate and blessed, maybe 80. But 85 years of worship given to us in one night, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. We cannot praise and thank Allah enough for such an opportunity, such a blessing, such a ni'mah. We can't. We just can't thank him enough. That's why this night is very significant. What should we do in this night? I am asking you this question. Well, I'm not going to give you what you hear every day from all your speeches and all the talks that you listen to. Let me put up a hadith. I've got a slide of a hadith. Let me see if I can share my screen. Um, maybe I can't share the screen. Maybe my brothers who are running can share the screen. If you've got any questions, you can. Um, I'm not sure if I can, but let me read the hadith anyway. If you want to ask questions, you can. I'll open up the floor for questions anytime. Rasulullah said this very beautiful hadith. It's in hadith in, in Bukhari, where he says, whoever shows, let me see if I can actually um, share this. Uh, can I share the screen? My brothers who are... Um, Yes, yes they've given me permission. Very good. Giving me permission to share. Very good. This is the hadith. Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever shows enmity to someone devoted to me, I shall be at war with them. My servant draw, draws near to me with anything more love to me than the religious duties I have enjoined upon him. My servant continues to draw nearer to me with nafil ibadat or worship so that I shall love him. When I love him, I am his hearing with which he hears. When I love him, I am his eyes with which he sees. When I love him, I'm his hands with which he strikes. And I'm his foot or feet with which he walks. Were he to ask me of anything, I'll surely give it to him. And were he to ask me for refuge, I would surely grant him it. I do not hesitate about anything as much as I hesitate about seizing the soul of my faithful servant. He hates death and I hate hurting him. This is a hadith reported in Bukhari, Hadith Qudsi. Read it again, my brothers and sisters, and think about it. Whoever shows enmity to somebody who is devoted to me, I shall be at war with them. My servant draws near to me with everything, with anything more loved by me than, sorry, my servant does not draw near to me with anything more loved to me than the religious duties I've enjoined upon him. In other words, his obligations. And my servant continues to come closer to me with nafil worship, in other words, the voluntary worship that we have, that Allah loves. Until Allah loves us all, so much so, that Allah loves us so much that we become, he becomes our hearing with which we hear. He becomes our eyes with which we see. He becomes our hand with which we strike and he becomes our feet with which we walk. And then he says, were we to ask anything of Allah, I will surely give it to him. Allah says that. And were we to ask for refuge, Allah will grant us refuge. And Allah hates to inflict any pain on us. Since death can be painful. He hates to give us death. But he also loves us so much that by dying, he takes us to him. My brothers and sisters, reflect on this hadith as much as you can. For month of Ramadan is all about becoming close to Allah. It's all about becoming very close to Allah. Becoming so close, you become so close to him that Allah loves you. And he loves you so much that he becomes your eyes. He becomes your ears. He becomes your hands. And he becomes your leg. My brothers and sisters, where would you find such love? Even your wife or your husband would not have such love for you. Nobody in this universe would have such love for you. Nobody can even, isn't even capable of loving you in this way. The only love, the source of all love, the essence of love, Allah can give us such love that 
we become so close to him that he becomes our eyes, ears, hands and legs. There is a verse of the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُوا دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُوا Allah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ And my servant asks you about me. My servant asks you concerning me. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I'm very, very, very close to him. وَجِيبُوا دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I respond to all his calls. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Is he not going to respond to mine? وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي Just believe in me, O my self. Just have trust in me. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So that I can show you the right path. Allah is concerned about me asking about him. Prophet of Allah taught us, that, taught us that whenever we ask Allah, Allah responds. Allah says that in the Quran, Ud'uni as lakum, ask me, and I shall respond. Here in this hadith, were you to ask me of anything, I'll give it to you. Were you to ask for refuge in me, I'll grant you that. I hesitate to cause you pain because I love you very much. That's what Allah is saying. And month of Ramadan is the month to become closer to Allah. To become closer to Allah. So close. That Allah becomes our eyes, our ears, our hands and our legs. This means, my brothers and sisters, with this blessed eyes, we don't see bad. Because Allah becomes our eyes. What we see is what Allah sees, of course. But we are abusing Allah's given eyes if we see the wrong thing. In these blessed month, this blessed month of Ramadan, these blessed days, we should train ourselves so that we can see the right thing. And in order for us to be trained and our habits to change, our personalities and our characters to change and transform and last for the rest of the year, we should recognize that Allah says, it's these eyes. We, it's our eyes that he takes and we take the sight that he gives us. SubhanAllah. Our ears. He becomes our ears with which we hear. You cannot listen to gossip, slander, backbite, swearing, abusive language, foul language. If Allah has become your ear with which you hear, you cannot. You cannot be in the company of a people who speak such language. You cannot be in a company of people who are so backbiting, slandering and gossiping. You cannot be in the company of anybody who is doing anything, making any, any sound, any noise that is displeasing to Allah. In the month of Ramadan, it's a time to change. And the last 10 days of Ramadan, remember, it's the golden opportunity to transform your character. Your hands. How do you use your hand? Halal earning. Holding things that are halal. Using it in a productive way. It's called the amana of our hands. Our legs with which we walk. Where do we go? Do you know, brothers and sisters, on the Day of Judgment, there is a, there is a, there is a verse of the Quran which frightens the life out of me. Where Allah says, اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكذبون. On that day, Allah will seal our mouth. Mouth that is traditionally made to talk will be sealed. وتكلمنا أيديهم and their hands will talk. That the hands will talk. وتشهد أرجلهم and the legs will testify. يا رب. The hand that became the one Allah gave. If we become close to Allah because we love him and we do extraordinary act, acts of worship, Allah says he, our hands, he becomes our hands. So this hand on the day of judgment cannot talk against me if it's become blessed by Allah. Our legs cannot testify against us if we have been so close to Allah. Month of Ramadan is all about becoming closer and closer and as close as possible to Allah. Nothing more counts, my brothers and sisters, than your worship that makes you closer to Allah. Nothing more counts. I don't want to tell you what to do. You already know what to do. Some of you may be saying, please tell us what to do. But I don't need to tell you, you've got brain. When you pray, pray consciously. 
when you pray, pray consciously. It's no point just doing the motions up and down, up and down. This year you'd have realized it more than any other year because in other years we would have gone to the mosque to pray taraweeh from one mosque to another. We would have gone to listen to the imam. This year you're going to do it to yourself at home, right? So you're going to have to pray. And if you're going to pray long hours, you might as well mean what you're doing on your prayer rather than just doing the motion. The motion don't count because you might as well be a robot and pray. Allah doesn't want robots to pray for him. Allah does not want robots to pray to him. He has got angels doing that already. Human beings are not robots. You've got a brain. So if you're praying, make your prayers count. But do it consciously. What on earth are you praying for? What are you saying in your prayer? Remember I said to you earlier on, you say to Allah in the prayer, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ SubhanAllah. What a say. You read Fatiha every day, every time you stand for prayer. And in that prayer, Fatiha, you say, Please show me the right path. You are asking Allah to show you the right path. Allah shows you the right path, but you ignore it. Straight after Ramadan, you get back to your normal. You forget about Allah. You get on with your life and do your own things as you want. What was the point of praying? You prayed 17 times every day. What was the point of praying? If you're going to give it up straight after the month of Ramadan, you're just wasting your time. In fact, after Ramadan, you will continue praying. And if prayers have no meaning to you in your life, why are you wasting your time? So make your prayers count. Make them meaningful. Make your fasting count. Make your fasting character transformative. Otherwise, you're wasting time. Make your recitation of the Quran heartwarming, inspiring, thought-provoking, life-changing. Make Quran the guide of your life, the criterion by which you live, not a book that you put on the top shelf and you kiss it when you need it and you only open it when, they're, when people are dead. Quran is a book of guide and you've transformed that Quran into a book of prayer for those who are dead. Make reading of the Quran meaningful and transformative. What's the point of touching a book called the Quran you read in a language that you do not, do not understand. I find it baffling that people have a Quran that they read and they make no effort to understand it. It is absolutely and utterly foolish that people don't make an effort to understand the Quran. It doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you do that, my brothers and sisters? If Quran is a guide to you, surely you should read the guide. If Quran is a healer to you, surely you should read what it says and follow and practice it. Some people prefer to have tawiz around, the, around their neck with the words of the Qur'an, but they don't want to read the words of the Qur'an and understand it. What an unfortunate human behavior. Make your charity count. When you give for the sake of Allah, make it count. When you give for the sake of Allah, it should remove your troubles. When you give for the sake of Allah, it should remove your illnesses. When you give for the sake of Allah, it should open up doors for you. When you give for the sake of Allah and share the wealth that you have, you should purify. It should purify your wealth in your heart. When you give for the sake of Allah, you show that you care and that's why you are sharing with the world. Make your charity count. Some people become frantic. I want to give zakat. I must give zakat. I must give zakat. I must give zakat. They don't understand the concept of zakat. They don't understand the impact of zakat. They don't understand the transformative impact of this amazing, amazing, amazing pillar of Islam called zakat. They don't understand it. Everything that you do, make it count. And in the last 10 days of Ramadan, it's about making your prayer extraordinary. It's about making your fasting extraordinary. It's about making your charity extraordinary. It's about getting yourself completely cleansed in the last few days of Ramadan. You know, to finish off, let me sum up. I've spoken enough and I would like you to ask questions if you have any, because a person speaking for such, such a long time doesn't really register much. You will forget about what I've said after uh, five minutes. So if you cannot remember, any, remember anything, then please try and remember what I'm about to say to you. If you are going to focus on the month of Ramadan about what it is that you want to do, then do me a favor. Get your sins cleansed from your record permanently. How do you do that? By doing toba. Toba means to make a U-turn. You walk along the road and you found out you're driving along, you find out that you're on the wrong road, wrong motorway. You have to do a U-turn at a safe space, at a safe place, in a roundabout, and you come back. 
That's called Tawbah. So you make that. Do a U-turn. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to come back. Come back to Allah. Allah loves Tawbah. Ask Allah through istighfar, Ya Allah, forgive me. I've done the U-turn. Now forgive me, Ya Allah. Forgive me, Ya Allah, for I've done something wrong. But that, the last 10 days of Ramadan has been dedicated for you to completely get your records and your slate cleansed. How do you do that? You ask Allah meaningfully, intentionally. Ya Allah, please completely remove all records and residues of sin and signs from my record on the Day of Judgment. Don't lay them open such that I'll be embarrassed. Ya Allah, remove it all. Wipe them clean. Ya Allah. Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet of Allah, O Prophet of Allah, what shall I do in the last 10 days of Ramadan? What dua shall I make? Shall I, shall I read? She, Prophet said, Ya Aisha, say to Allah, Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. That's the dua you should be making. Ya Allah, please remove, efface all the sins from my record. It's completely remove them from my record. Let it not be even there. Let there be no signs of my sin. My brothers and sisters, I'd like to say to you, spend the last 10 days of Ramadan connecting with Allah meaningfully and intentionally. Don't just do rituals. Rituals have no significance if it's not coming from your heart. So if you read the Quran, read it with meaning. Read it intentionally. Connect with it. Understand what you're reading. Reflect on how it applies to your life. How you can change. If you're going to pray, pray meaningfully. Why are you praying? If you're talking to Allah, talk properly. Connect. Build relationship. If you're going to give sadaqat and zakat, give it meaningfully. Understand the impact of it. If you're going to fast in the month of Ramadan, fast intentionally and meaningfully. Make it a moment of transformation. Ramadan is about to go. But hopefully you'll still be alive with the teachings and the blessings of Ramadan to guide you and support you. And if you pass away, cleansed and ready to face Allah, beautiful and amazing. SubhanAllah. So brothers and sisters, I'll stop here, pause here. I don't like talking for more than half an hour or so. So I've just spoken for literally half an hour. I'm going to open up the floor for you to ask any questions. And I don't know what the format of questioning is. You can write the questions on the side, as my dear brother said. And I'm pretty certain I'll be seeing them on my screen and I can answer them. Inshallah, I'll try my best. But remember, Ramadan is an opportunity to train, to change, to connect, to cleanse, to reflect and transform. May Allah bless you all and forgive us and forgive me for my mistakes. And forgive me if I've said something that may have hurt you. It was not intentional. وَأَخْرِ الدَّعْوَانَ أَنَّ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Thank you very much for listening. Jazakallah.